So welcome to the kickoff of entrepreneurial finance. As you can see, this is uh, IBENF, and this is part of the Masters in uh, Innovation and Business here at SDU Sonobo. So the first thing that we will be doing today is to give a quick look to the elements that will uh, build the course. So the first thing is that we basically need to know a bit about this course. We will look at the syllabus and we will end up with a kind of a guideline of what is going to be happening in the next uh, session. So this course basically wants to offer you the possibility to understand what are the financing challenges related to innovative projects. And this is something that happens to uh, innovative projects in a company, but also, and in particular, we are also interested in technology startups. What do we cover? We cover uh, topics that go from the idea of what is a valuation, so to put a value, to put a price, to know for how much can I sell a, a project that I've been working on, but also maybe a startup that I, I want to maybe merge or I want to sell to a competitor or potential interested buyer. Or maybe I want to have an investor coming on board and I need to put a value to what is already done, what has already been developed. So this is especially important when we talk about other concepts like funding rounds or investors, even venture capital. So maybe some of us will be able to create this uh, company and then we need that external investor or maybe it's a VC. And that's also we need to know how to prepare these uh, uh, documents and valuation of my organization. We will also be looking at financing strategies. So it's not only about getting investors in. A lot of times it's about knowing which are the best funding sources for the needs I have, for the goals I want to achieve with my company, with my organization. What we will try to do during all this course is to try to develop this capacity that allows us to establish financing strategies. And they need to be linked to the product market strategy and the overall needs of the organization. Some organizations might be growing fast. Some organizations might need a lot of uh, funding at the very beginning. Some other organizations only need funding when they actually try to scale and grow fast. So different types of organizations, different uh, types of strategies might require different also funding. We need to know about this. We are particularly focused in this course in technology-based companies. It doesn't mean that what we learn does not apply to other types of companies. It basically means that we will pay more attention to those companies and we will give more examples of companies that are dealing with technological assets so that part of their business goes around new technologies, new developments, and there are some specific elements that we will be seeing in the course and makes it a bit more, let's say, hard or complex. The objective is that when you join a company, when you are in an organization, or even when you create your own startup, you are able to understand those nuances, those elements that make technology-based projects with strong innovation needs a bit more complex, a bit more difficult. What we will do during the course is that we will always try to combine uh, insights from financial theory, financial management, general aspects of uh, business related elements to finance from finance and accounting. But we will also try to bring them into practice, even if it's a simulation, even if it's a specific example, or even as we will be doing, going to see some real companies and working with them. We will be doing this for the next three months, more or less, and this is going to, something that is going to be happening mostly on Tuesdays. So Tuesdays early morning, 8.15 till 12, we will be at U107 here at SDU Sonobor Campus. Uh, this course is a 5 ECTS course, and now we should kind of go and give a quick look to our the syllabus follows a structure that you are already used to, so nothing new here. Just to remember that this is a course that uh, is aimed at engineers, people doing engineering studies. It means that it, like no fi previous financial knowledge is required. If you already have uh, quite developed uh, financial knowledge, you will see that some of the things you will be able to catch up faster, and probably you will be able to go in depth in some of the issues or topics. Well, that's, that's something that the course is designed to allow different rhythms of uh, different, uh, the, let's say, uh, previous backgrounds. 
something important that we want to spend at least a few minutes is looking at the learning outcomes. The learning outcomes are, let's say, the commitment that we agree uh, right now between uh, you and me that this is what we want to achieve at the end of the course. This is also what the oral exam uses as reference information to establish and assess whether what is your grade and how much you have been able to achieve those uh, learning outcomes. There are three different levels. So at the level of knowledge, things that we expect that you are able to identify, describe, and at least have a basic understanding of how they work and what they are. Number one, financial planning in the context of entrepreneurship. So we want that you are able to understand the basics of what it means to finance, uh, plan finance uh, aspects in a new organization, in a new project. Doesn't mean you need to be an expert. We also want that you are able to measure financial performance so that you are able to be familiar with how our financial statements organized, what are the key elements usually you will see in there, and also how do you assess how is a company performing, in particular, for example, in a startup. We also want that you are able to evaluate the risk and rewards in entrepreneurship and innovation, which are the specific aspects when we have innovative projects that you should be looking at. And this is a bit different from more mature industries or stable businesses. We also want that you get some understanding of how do we assess the value of IP, specifically meaning, for example, patents. So we need to be a bit comfortable on putting a price tag on things that are under development, that it's not yet uh, clear what is going to be the market. This is something we need to achieve. We also need to know about the classic funding sources, but also about the new alternative uh, funding sources. Is this, let's say, this entrepreneurial financing. Uh, there are a few new tools coming in that are important, that at least you are familiar with them. We also want that you understand what is the due diligence process. So every time that more than one party gets involved in a financing operation, an acquisition, even a, a maybe getting some debt from the bank or other operations, there is this due diligence process. We will be going into at least the detail that you can, you know what it is and you are comfortable when somebody else, an accountant or another person talks to you about this. Moving into the skills, this is a bit higher level. Those are things that we should be practicing and learning how to apply them into reality. Even if we are not doing it, or maybe we will not be experts again, but we will be able to get a case and put this into practice so we are comfortable uh, applying this knowledge. So we need to be able to read and use financial statements, not just to understand how they are organized or what means each of the concepts, but also to extract valuable information of what's happening in that organization, what is behind. We also should be able to communicate with accounting and financial professionals. So what is the language they use? How do they present the information? How do they explain things? We will be familiarized with uh, these terms and this kind of a specific context so that you know how to adjust the way you speak or the way you present or the way you share information. This also is, can be summarized in this point where we say that we need to be able to prepare a persuasive presentation. It can be external investors, it can be internal investors, but it's, let's say, there are certain elements, formal aspects that we need to follow. We will learn about those. On the competences level, this is a bit higher level. We need to be able to interpret the most common elements of a financial statement. So it means that uh, even in real life that I can understand what happens and why is this important. And, and if I am given or I get involved in a new company, I should be able to uh, know how to, for example, generate at least a basic financial statement. And I also uh, something we need to achieve at this higher level of competence is that I need to be I have the ability and be competent on, for example, looking at financial statement, criticize it and discuss it with another person and argue why I see problems or challenges. So this means that not only understand the basic concepts of the financial statement, but also understand the how I should take into account, for example, the industry where this company is operating 
or other elements that might be of importance. We also need to be able to propose a, fund a fundraising process. So how do we get this thing started? It doesn't mean that we need to be able to be successful, but at least that we are able to be, uh, that we can propose this and that we can do that in almost any situation. I need to be able to understand what it means to create a strategy for fundraising and how do I read the different elements to be able to say, okay, this is the way I would propose to move on and this is like what I would do first and then second or this thing I would not do and this is the reason why I would not do this thing. And finally, it's also important that you are able to recognize and you are good at that, what are the key elements that I should be sharing with an investor. The investor again can be external or it can be maybe the chief financial officer in your company or even somebody from the finance manager uh, department. So uh, the other information is kind of general information. You can look at it with more detail. There are two things that we might need more time that is about the evaluation. So the oral exam, it's about 40% of the grade. The rest of the grade comes from a portfolio of assignments. Uh, we will go into more detail later. Suggested books. Uh, there is this great book by uh, Favozzi, recently uh, published. Uh, you can get, go and buy it. This is a bit technical. This is a bit, uh, even I would say, that more thought for maybe uh, masters in finance that are interested in high tech. In our situation is we like high tech, we are comfortable with engineering approaches, but maybe you find it a bit dry, uh, but it's, it's a great book. There are then a couple of books that are available that uh, could be also good tools for us. So one is a strategic entrepreneurial finance, that it's a nice collection of essays about entrepreneurial finance. And then there is this last book that is also available as you are uh, SDU students. And this one is, it's kind of uh, offers a very smooth transition for each of the topics. And I would really recommend that you use this as your reference book. Let me now go through uh, in a quick way uh, what we will be seeing in during this course. So we will start covering what are the basics of entrepreneurial finance. We will do that step by step. We will get exposed to the main four financial statements. We will get exposed to the accounting principles. We will start to understand what is the role of the auditor and their reports. So we will start to get familiar with all those aspects. The second session we will be having, we will be going into more detail in what are the, those key financial statements. You will see that sometimes we say they are four, but actually at the end we usually only mention the, the main three financial statements. That is the balance sheet, the income statement and the cash flow statements. Um, something that we need to remember is that each of those um, uh, financial statements might be different depending on the accounting uh, protocols in different countries. We will not go that much into detail, but we will take that into consideration when we explore some of the differences that in some places, the way they order or that they um, classify the, the aspects that are uh, describing the financial statements. What we will be doing next is we will be looking at the financial analysis for projects and new ventures. This basically means that we will be learning how do I quickly get some information about the um, situation of that company. We will be looking at ratios. Uh, we will try to get familiar with them and start using them. The next thing we will have to do is look at financial planning. So how do I get myself organized? How do I create a budget? How do I create a forecast? Even if it sometimes it feels more like an art than a science to create a forecast. But we need to learn at least the, what things I should take into account. The same thing happens for profit planning. So how do I kind of develop a um, forecast or projection of uh, production costs? Then we will, at session five, we will be entering in the second part of the course that is uh, a substantial um, a point of change that we, at this point, we need to have achieved those uh, numbers, uh, one, two, three, four sessions, so that we can move on into the concepts related to valuation. We will start trying to understand what's the difference when you want to put a price or assess the value of a public or a private company. 
we will understand this concept of value in finance and economic terms, and also we will have a broad description of valuation methods. Something that we will be going in depth in the following session when we look at different types of methods, and we will keep doing this after the, the holiday break in October, and then we will be getting into more into the valuation of private companies. And then here we can look at the market method and we also will be looking at this concept of how do I value uh, pre-revenue startup firms. Uh, even this is similar to some biotech projects that are very difficult to put a value because they haven't yet been launched into the market. So how do I put a value into those things? At, the, at this point, you will be working on a project. So you will see that the topics in class move towards other aspects. But uh, this allows you to keep uh, kind of uh, pushing ahead in your projects because you will have already gotten the key elements to, for example, do a valuation. At this point, we will be looking, for example, on what is the relationship between a financial perspective and project management and how do I take into account different types of risk. So we will be going in depth into the different natures of risk. Not all sources of risk are the same. Then we get into an important point, session nine. Here we will be looking at getting financing sources. So what are the differences? Which are my options? Which is the usual process? Some of those concepts, you might already be quite familiar with them. We will try to quickly put a bit of order and kind of refresh how to select, how to use, and which one plays which role in the process of growth of a new company or project or a startup. Something that we will be uh, also uh, touching upon will be looking at how do I engage stakeholders in these processes? So how come I have to kind of generate legitimacy for my project, for my new company, and each of those stakeholders might want to hear a different song, a different story. So we need to understand how then I should be able to communicate with those people and how, what aspects of the financial management I should be putting in the table when I talk to each of them. This is, we are getting now close to the end of the course and we will be uh, dealing with a very interesting topic that is about using real options also for projects and new ventures. This is particularly of interest with uh, companies and projects that have this uncertainty element of new potential scenarios for a technological development. Things might go in different ways, they, there might be milestones in the R&D process, and this we need to know. So real options is a quite useful method in this type of situations. So at the end of the course, there will be time for having some uh, in-class discussions on what we call valuation report presentations and a final session that uh, I just put it here so that if we need to go through some details or have a Q&A discussion, preparation for the exam, we at least uh, have taken that into account and have blocked our, our agendas. Again, a refresh on the evaluation. So there will be this 60% is distributed uh, across six different assignments, but they have different weight. Not all of them have the, the same weight. The first assignment, it's um, combination, sorry, the first and the second assignment are basically a very easy task. I will ask you to go into um, a block of a famous uh, professor of finance and he is a very nice um, uh, writer also that tries to get interesting topics and write them in a way that can be appealing for most of us. What we will be doing is you will be going into those blog posts that he has been writing in the last years. You will pick one and you will answer some questions in a discussion board in our blackboard. This will help us to also be more exposed to interesting topics in finance that maybe are not the ones we are specifically covering in class, but this will help us to give us a kind of a broader picture, a more real life uh, cases. So this will be the first two assignments. If you do this, you already have 10% of the final grade. Then we move into assignment three. This assignment three is financial analysis of two firms. Actually, the point will be that you pick a firm that is failing or has already failed and a firm that is supposedly growing and doing well. So we will then assess with the uh, ratios, so financial ratios, to confirm whether those ratios help us to understand the situation of the firm. And this is something that 
you will have to then share in a short document. Don't worry about that, but it will be, have to be also posted in the in the Blackboard. This will be as an assignment, not as a as a post in a discussion board. Assignment four will consist that you will get either a real company or an existing, uh, sorry, a, a, a publicly traded company, and then you will be getting, for example, the PNL of that company and the balance sheet, and you will try to project how would that company evolve in time. So we will be mostly focusing in doing a financial budget projection. And the point here is that you also identify what are the key aspects that will drive the costs, the sales, and how probably the, those um, operating margin of those firms might change in time as they grow or as maybe competitors come in. Here, the document will be a bit longer because you also will have to identify things that are happening around that company that impact on the forecast that you propose. Now we are getting into the uh, assignment five, and this already can be done with pairs, so you don't need to do that individually. And here the point is that you get a company that is already in the stock market and you try to understand how the, the current valuation in the stock market is similar to the valuation that you would do looking at their financial statements. This is a, will take also a bit more of time, but at this point of also in the course, you will have to start focusing on the assignment number six. This is the, let's say, the, the assignment that has also a stronger weight, 30% of the final grade. And here you will be doing two things. You will be engaging with, a, a, if possible, a small company or a startup company in the region, and you will try to do two documents for them. One document will be basically a financial forecast. So how is their cash flows should be evolving in the next two, three years? How is their budgeting in the next two, three years? What is their current balance sheet? And the other thing you will be doing is you will be trying to do a valuation. Here, probably it will be a combination of two methods, discounted cash flow, and um, we'll be basically using multiples, or a benchmark of metrics that helps you also to assess and to introduce a range of potential values for that company. With this, we will be ready to take the exam that will be the remaining 40% uh, of your uh, grade. The exam is an oral exam with an external examiner. So this is uh, what we needed to cover from the syllabus. And then getting back to the intro, there are just two more things that I want to be sure that you also see is what can you expect from this course that you get familiar with the financial perspective of projects that you get comfortable with this, that you can get some first-hand experience if you've never worked in accounting or finance in your companies or previous projects, that you can see examples that then you can call upon when you need them, you can apply concepts, that you also have time to practice, share your own thoughts, create your own perspective on the topic. What do I expect? I basically expect that we have an interesting uh, and fun course, a lot of discussions, that you can create your own views, even if they are not the same as I do. Uh, maybe some concepts, uh, you apply them in a different way or we see them in different, uh, we prioritize things differently. Okay, that will be interesting to cover and discuss. And I also expect that you can follow the course as close as possible as the pace of the class as it advances. Because as you will see, as usually it happens, it's an accumulative course. So you will be missing a bit on the last sessions if you have not been able to follow it properly. Now to finish this uh, um, first uh, introduction, you have a quiz that it will also help us to kind of get the first uh, understanding of where are we right now, what is our baseline uh, level.